Chautauqua Tech, Saturday Story Time. These are the stories that you might have missed while you were caught up in other stories. Hey, welcome back to Shotoku Tech Saturday Story Time, 25 July 2020 edition. Scientists discovered this metal-eating bacteria accidentally. This happened at the California Institute of Technology. Dr. Jared Ledbetter was working with manganese in a covered glass jar soaking in tap water. Well, he had to work off campus for several months. When he returned, the inside of the jar was coated with the dark material. It turns out that it was oxidized manganese. So this bacteria had actually metabolized the manganese and produced manganese oxide. These are the first bacteria found to use manganese as their source of fuel. A wonderful aspect of microbes in nature is that they can metabolize seemingly unlikely materials like metals yielding useful energy to the cell. They can use manganese for a process called chemosynthesis, which converts carbon dioxide into biomass. This may help explain why groundwater and water distribution systems can become clogged by manganese oxides. It may also help us to understand manganese nodules, large metallic balls that are found on the seafloor that are the size of grapefruit and often contain rare metals. Italy's deadly Stromboli volcano suddenly explodes without warning. This happened at 3 a.m. on Sunday. There was a loud explosion and eruption, sending lava and debris falling around the crater of the volcano and down the slope known as Sierra del Fuco. This morning's explosion was about 10 times stronger than the average size of explosions of the volcano and comparable to the very large eruption that happened on the 15th of March in 2017. But there were two other instances in 2019 that were still one order of magnitude larger. United Arab Emirates has successfully launched their Hope Mars Orbiter aboard the Japanese H-2A rocket by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. This happened on Sunday, and it's expected to arrive at Mars by February 2021 and spend about a year orbiting Mars collecting data about its atmosphere. UAE reported successful ground communications with the Mars probe and a good trajectory for its multi-month journey. So the Italian Coast Guard and biologists were working to free the sperm whale from an illegal fishing net. This happened on Sunday. Boaters reported that they saw the struggling sperm whale in that stretch of the Tyrrhenian Sea off of Italy's west coast and contacted the Coast Guard. It's particularly difficult due to the state of the agitation of this whale. It didn't allow for continual intervention. Since the beginning of the year, the Coast Guard has sequestered illegal fishing nets totaling more than 62 miles in length, or 100 kilometers. So they're stepping up their efforts to combat this illegal fishing. So this rare yellow turtle was discovered in India. Residents of Balasore first spotted the turtle. It looks more like a lemon than a turtle. They handed it over to forest officials. Wildlife experts say it's possibly an albino mutation of a common turtle. This turtle that has been rescued, its skull and body are yellow. It's truly rare. I have never seen such a turtle in my life, ever. Make sure to follow the link down below to the Blogspot article and you can see a video of this guy walking around. Dozens of active volcano sites are spotted on Venus for the first time. Several dozen active volcano sites have been identified on Venus. This was determined using the data from the European Space Agency's Venus Express mission, which ended in 2014. It provided a better understanding of the planet's interior, and then they compared this information with infrared images from NASA's Magellan mission that flew to Venus in the early 1990s. People have suggested that Venus is volcanically active before. What we've done now is map out these regions and correlate them to specific sites. So these are simulations that help them identify what an active volcano site would actually look like. And looking at these images, they found at least 37 volcanic sites that had these features that suggests they are active. Understanding whether or not Venus is volcanically active 
could help us understand why the Earth is habitable and Venus is a barren, hot, and hellish wasteland. So this material called Proteus becomes the world's first manufactured, non-cuttable material. It's just 15% the density of steel. It could be used for indestructible bike locks or lightweight armor. So they've named this material Proteus. It uses ceramic spheres in a cellular aluminum structure to foil angle grinders, drills, and saws. It creates this destructive vibration that blunts any cutting tools that are used against it. As this cutting tool starts to work through the outer layer, the embedded ceramic spheres create vibrations that blunt the tool's sharp edges and the particles of ceramic dust begin filling up the gaps. So the material actually becomes stronger and more dense as they cut it. The force of the cutting tool is actually turned back against itself and it is weakened and destroyed by its own attack. Scientists are using brain-computer connections to restore a lost sense of touch. So these BCI, or brain-computer interfaces, are basically arrays of electrical connections that are attached to the brain's upper layer, the cortex. The electrode array can record signals from the brain, or they can create connections to a periphery in the body. In the United States, Battelle has created a BCI system that works by gathering residual touch signals. Their system picks up the signals in the brain via an array in the motor cortex and decodes and amplifies them, then passes on the sensory feedback to a separate area on the user's body which still has a working sense of touch. So it's sort of a haptic feedback. You may not, like if you had an artificial hand, you're not going to feel it in your artificial hand, but you're going to get some haptic feedback at a part of your body that has a sense of touch. So that that artificial hand becomes more familiar to you. Users can manipulate and receive sensory feedback from robotic arms. Restoring touch can do more than just aid in movement. This can also help people that have lost limbs overcome phantom limb pain. When you begin to sense the replacement artificial limb, the brain can adjust and the pain can dissipate. So geophysicists make this mind-blowing discovery that confirms that Plato was right. The Earth is made, on the average, of cubes. We all recognize Plato as the 5th century BC philosopher. He believed the universe was made of five types of matter, earth, air, fire, water, and cosmos. I'm theorizing that cosmos is dark matter, but well, let's talk about earth this time. Each of these was described as a particular geometry, a platonic shape. For the earth, that shape was the cube. Science has moved beyond Plato's conjectures, looking instead at the atom as the building block of the universe. Yet Plato seems to have been onto something. It turns out that Plato's conception about the element Earth being made up of cubes is literally the statistic average model for the real Earth. Plato is widely recognized as the first person to develop the concept of an atom, the idea that matter is composed of some indivisible component at the smallest scale. But the understanding was only conceptual. Nothing about our modern understanding of atoms derives from what Plato told us. But it turns out that Plato's conception about the Earth element, the statistical average model for real Earth, is the cube. So a team from three universities have basically developed models that demonstrate the average shape of rocks on the Earth, and it turns out they're cubes. Geometric models predict that natural rocks would fragment into cubic shapes on average. If you take a three-dimensional polyhedral shape, slice it randomly into two fragments, then slice these fragments again and again, you get a vast number of different polyhedral shapes, but in an average sense, the resulting shape of the fragments is a cube. On Thursday, China launches their ambitious attempt to land a rover on Mars. This is aboard a Long March 5 rocket. The Mars rover has accurately entered the scheduled orbit. This is the second flight to depart towards Mars, after UAE sent their HOPE orbiter from Japan on Monday, and NASA is going to launch the Perseverance rover next week. 
China's mission is a tandem spacecraft with both an orbiter and a rover, and it's going to take seven months to reach Mars, like the others. The rover, Tianwen-1, will look for underground water, as well as the evidence of possible ancient life. This isn't the first attempt by China to reach Mars. A Chinese orbiter accompanying a Russian mission was lost when the spacecraft failed to get out of Earth's orbit after launching from Kazakhstan and burned up in the atmosphere. Stone tools suggest earlier human presence in North America. This stone tool was found below the last glacial maximum layer from a cave in Zacatecas, central Mexico. Artifacts from the cave suggest people were living in North America much earlier than most scientists think. It's generally accepted that humans inhabited North America between 16 and 17,000 years ago, where this tool actually dates as early as 26,500 years. There's also some indication that these artifacts go back beyond 30,000 years, but the evidence isn't strong enough to make a firm claim. Okay, so you have to file this under just because you can does not mean you should. And so in Russia, they were mixing paddlefish sperm with sturgeon eggs. Russian sturgeon are nearing extinction, but they're also the source of much of the world's caviar. So they decided to introduce paddlefish sperm. Basically, they put the sperm next to the eggs. And so they wound up with these hybrid sturtle fish. This kind of hybrid would be impossible in the wild because the American paddlefish and the Russian sturgeon live on opposite sides of the globe. They have vastly different survival strategies and they've been evolving separately for 184 million years. Both species of fish are exceptionally rare. The American paddlefish may be the last paddlefish species left. The Chinese paddlefish went extinct between 2005 and 2010. And sturgeon as a group are critically endangered. Russian sturgeon are more rare among them. That's why the scientists were initially attempting gynogenesis to introduce the sturgeon eggs into development without fertilization as a possible way to replenish the species. Gynogenesis was successful in 2014 on the eggs of ship sturgeon, which are critically endangered using Siberian sturgeon sperm. They really weren't intending to hybridize these species. It was absolutely unintentional. These are both fossil fish. They can grow slowly and live for decades. They have skeletons made of cartilage instead of bone. They also have skin without scales and similar intestines. They have extremely slow evolutionary rates, so maybe they're not quite as different as it seems. So these hybrids, dubbed sturtlefish, have their mother's appetite and their father's long snout. Genetic analysis shows that they have twice as much of their mother's DNA than the paddlefish DNA. I did a double take when I saw it. I just didn't believe it. I thought, hybridization between sturgeon and paddlefish, there's no way. They suspect that they'll be sterile. They won't be able to reproduce, so it's not going to help them with caviar production. And while they're doing well in captivity, the researchers don't plan to make more of them. Thank goodness. Make sure to check for the link down below to this blogspot page that has all of the links to these stories. And thank you for watching Shotoku Tech Saturday Storytime. Have a great week. Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.